Yeah, I uh, I think I did something on this where I said Wall Street uh, street justice is coming to Wall Street. So, um, you know, while most people fear, you know, this system collapsing and that they're, you know, worried about government confiscation and, you know, the uh, further centralization of power into some new world order, you know, super global currency, um, I think the reality is that these guys are running scared. They're doing everything they can to maintain uh, the current paradigm. Um, and it's the, uh, when the system comes undone, um, the 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 people start looking for answers, whereas most of society is in denial. Um, and those that are awake see who the bad guys are: the owners of the central banks, the the paycheck players like Bernanke and, and Jamie Dimon and Blake Masters, who you know really aren't the elite. They're they're really paycheck players. It's the guys that sign their checks, the guys that own the Federal Reserve, and the guys that own the central banks. Um, and that own the politicians and that these guys are really just paycheck players. Um, I think those paycheck players will be sacrificed while the real big bad guys, the ones that uh, own this paradigm, uh, slink off into uh, the dark once again. And um, yeah, I think street justice is coming for them. And I, I've said this in my Blythe Masters video. Um, you know, it's, e it's easy to be arrogant and, uh, and, and operate with an air of invincibility when your boss is uh, the Federal Reserve and the, and the United States government uh, has an unlimited balance sheet and the government decides what's legal and illegal, um, yeah, I can see the arrogance that they have in their things. But the reality is no government, no Federal Reserve, no balance sheet, no prosecuting attorney is going to save them from their from their uh, you know willing uh, accomplishment of of being a part of this crime, especially when humanity goes through an anger stage. I really fear for these people's lives. Um, you know, while they're, they're able to cash in billion dollar bonuses or multi million dollar bonuses, um, it's not going to buy them um, you know the protection that they need when all of humanity uh, demands justice. I mean, you know, this is. When this goes down, people are not just going to roll over and say, "Oh, that that's it." We're going to see Nuremberg trials. We're going to see hangings. We're going to see bankers uh, uh, run. And and it's not even going to be you know guys like me and you who we saw this coming. I'm not going to be angry when this goes down. I'm I'm going to be positively moving forward. It's the people that were most dependent, most uh, illusion, perhaps even their own, uh, you know, the people that are working for them. Uh, are going to be the ones that are going to be most upset because they d they'll suddenly realize, God, this guy is the one that blew up the world, and I was a part of it, and I better start pointing fingers up as opposed to, you know, so I'm not part of the bad guys. That's why I encourage any of these bankers who get what's going on, number one, stop what you're doing. Um, start you know, blowing the whistle because you know what's coming, and if you don't come clean now, uh, there's no, there's not going to be a remorse later on, um, you know, that, that you're going to start pointing the finger up um, you're going to be lumped in with all these other ones. So this is a, a dangerous time, I think, for these people. And I think that's why they're acting out um, in the way that they are to try to maintain the, the unsustainable. How many of these bankers have been resigning in mass in the last few months, years? It's just crazy. It's like dozens and dozens and dozens. I think they're all starting to realize. Uh, yeah, I mean, 2008 was a good wake-up call for these guys. I mean, they, they knew the panic and fear that they had that their world was ending then. Uh, and they get that, um, you know, Geez, you know, long-term capital management was a hedge fund that threatened to blow up the world markets, and it was the institutions of Wall Street that had to rally together to save uh, the the global market from the individual investors. Well, the 2008 crisis was the institutions that threatened to blow up the entire world market with these credit default swaps and all this, you know, garbage, exotic uh, paper fiat, you know, you know, instruments that they created, and it was the sovereign nations that had to rally uh, to support the institutions. Well, who's going to bail out the sovereign nations? Um, once that once that pin is pricked on the on the uh, the reality that it, that uh, this is a big problem that you know nations it's not Lehman Brothers it's it's Greece it's not you know Bear Stearns it's the United States and Japan and and all these nations that are just loaded with debt um, and that's the sovereign nation part of it think about the all the individual all the individuals and corporations and states and local governments that are also straddled with debt this will not end until all the debt is wiped clear right there's no jubilee. Um... Yeah, I think that uh, street justice is going to get the majority of these people. Remember what they did to Mussolini. Gizrom84 here, uh, he wants to know what you think of the Free State Project. Are you familiar with that? Uh, free State, yeah. What do you think about that? Um, good effort. Um, I, I'm not of a... <laughs> this is where I, uh, I, I tend to frustrate a lot of people. Um, I'm not for any collective action against the collective problem. I think that in, in, to be intellectually honest, you have to do... 
um, you know, the, the opposite consciousness. Um, when the Tea Party first came on the scene, I said, this is going to fail because any collective effort is going to suffer. You can't, you can't do it. And the, the reason why is because um, think about the collective nature. Collective nature is a hierarchical, centralized system. Well, who's the ones that usually arrive at the top of any uh, pyramid of power? It's usually the most psychopathic, the most cunning, the most, uh, you know, the one that was able to cut the backroom deals. Um, and that's the reason why our entire system is, is being destroyed is because uh, any centralized power, um, you know, the, the, the famous quote, uh, Lord Acton says, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, I, I think it's the opposite. I think it's the corrupt that seek power. Um, so any centralized effort, I think, ultimately will be corrupted by, um, you know, the most power hungry people. Um, and I and I and I tell people, um, individual decentralized leaderless resistance to me is the future um, because it can't be corrupted. It can't. Um, it is real. It is with uh, you know. It's, it's within the limits of a, of a natural uh, you know organization. So instead of trying to rally you know thousands of people, we should have thousands of organizations who uh, may subscribe to the the same thing, but all working independently, all decentralized. Um, you know, think about the the what's the the our military is the most powerful military in the world. I mean, we have half the world's dollars going into our military, and what does our military fear? They fear decentralized uh, cells, uh, snipers, and that's because they can't handle uh, that reality of an individual resistance. Well, it's the same thing with this collective problem we have. The collective power cannot handle individuals. Uh, decentralized leaderless resistance um, you know taking uh, you know um, and a lot of the same stuff that Gandhi and, and Martin Luther King uh, nonviolent non-compliance um, by walking away from the system that's what I think people should be doing and I actually did a video questioning Ron Paul I love Ron Paul I love the the message he's woken up a lot of people but the reality is he's keeping so much of our energy and capital working on maintaining this illusion that we actually have choice in this paradigm that there there's a political solution to this we cannot reform the system it must collapse um, we cannot organize to become a bigger power because we're pushing our ideas onto others uh, and their natural reactions to push back what we should be doing is walking away from the system, walking away from the banks, walking away from the corporations, walking away uh, from eating at you know these places, and, and and be the opposite consciousness. So, I love the free state, but you know, it, to me, just the, the the collective nature of it is what I'm kind of repelled against. All right. Um, Arthur Andrake here wants to know. Here's a question I'm dying to have answered by a veteran expert in the silver market. How the heck do I borrow against my own silver? <laughs> you can't right now. No, it's not. Um, yeah, it, it, you. Uh, um, I, I've heard a couple people being able to do that at at a at a uh, bank, but it was only because they were desperate to get assets. Uh, the bank was, um, so they they gave a loan against it. But for the most part, you can't borrow against it. Um, but when I talk about in this uh, the video series, the ultimate exit strategy, I really started to think about what best way to um, you know to leverage our power. Um, and if you think about this collapse of the paradigm, you think about humanity all of a sudden valuing things that have real tangible value, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that we can't form our own bank and we can't make loans against our own bank or our own assets and we determine the value and we determine the terms of that. Um, because I think there's going to be a lot of power that is going to naturally go to those people who do have silver. So, um, you know, in the ultimate exit strategy, I basically push for an idea that we can uh, ultimately start creating our own paradigm and 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 having uh, a debt free fractional reserve free usury free banking system that uh, enables uh, people to uh, leverage their wealth without having interest without having uh, you know a false fractional reserve nature is something that of this opposite consciousness that I think will be uh, incredibly powerful in the next paradigm um, user nkk220 wants to know what made you go to public instead of just believing these things and stacking and keeping it to yourself? <laughs> um, I, I think just the, I, I kept saying to myself, you know, my, I, I will say all of my public effort is born out of the frustration of my private life. Um, I was not able to convince my partners, my parents, my friends, my family uh, to sell their properties, to, to buy into physical silver. Um, and I wasted a ton of energy um, trying to do that, pushing my beliefs onto them, um, trying to give them the context and stuff. 
And I really felt that um, as a mental justification, I said, well, let's look at this logically. Am I off the deep end with this stuff? And the more I went through this process, uh, especially in 2008 when it went from 21 to $9, I mean, silver was a tough investment then. Um, I said, um, if everybody knew, and I kept going back to these same fundamentals that I'm putting in the silver bullet and the silver shield, I said, this is a reality and there's just no denying it. It's maybe not its time yet. Um, but I really felt that if everybody knew what I knew about silver and I knew about uh, the banking system or history or false flags or you know uh, uh, nutrition and, and sustainability and all this other stuff, um, it would help speed up the process of people um, taking that positive productive action. And it was really me being stuck in depression, being frustrated with my own personal life trying to wake people up um, that I know that I needed to get into this acceptance level and by creating something positive of the opposite consciousness, uh, being the change that I wanted to be in the world, um, that not only helped me get out of the depression, but also started to see much more uh, positive action in my life. And then started, man, I mean, some of these letters and calls that I get from people, I mean, I have made more of an impact on some of these people than their own fr you know, fathers. There are, there are, you know, some of the, the most important teachers that they've had. Um, because, again, once your eyes are open uh, the first time, it's they're open forever. So... Um, you know, to, to kind of sum it up, I, I really believe that I could be a positive uh, force there. You know, out of private frustration, I, I turned it into something good. All right. Uh, user Everything is New wants to know. Uh, he says, in one of your videos, you mentioned that uh, you think that man, excuse me, in one of your videos, he mentions that you yeah, think global that warming. Uh, yeah, global warming is a hoax. Uh, he yeah. wants you to explain that. Yeah, I mean, uh, just look at the, the nature of it. it. This is, again, something that. Um, you know, we, I mean, first of all, just look up climate gate. I mean, the, the scientists that were involved in this, you know, purposely admitted or, or privately admitted that they rigged these numbers to, to do that. Um, you know, look at the, if you want to know what global warming is called, look at the sunspot cycle. Um, you know, times of, of history where uh, there was little amount of sunspots and the radiation that that generates and the energy that it, it pushes onto the, uh, to the country um, or onto the world. Um, I forget it was the Miranda medium or something like that during the Middle Ages where there was, um, you know, it was, you know, <laughs> it was cold in the in the world and they had, you know, <laughs> sheets of ice that went all the way down, you know, you know, through the middle of uh, the northern hemisphere and then there was warm periods where, you know, the uh, England was growing uh, grapes uh, up in England. I mean, because it was so warm there um, and. I mean, you know, look at who's pushing it. I mean, you know, Al Gore. I mean, this guy is, uh, uh, you know, to me, gone off the deep end. Um, and then you look at who pushes it out. I mean, the it, the Rothschilds were a big proponent of it. Um, uh, I think David Rothschild, one of the younger Rothschilds, uh, has made his whole uh, aura about being this natural guy. But the reality is, if you look at their, it's one thing to, to you know, say that there's a question uh, but what's their answer? Their answer was a global uh, carbon Ponzi scheme. Their answer was more government regulation. Their answer was the criminalization of life, um, you know, energy and, and uh, everything, regulation. It was regulation. It was all about control and, and power. And that sounds similar to the war on terror or the war on drugs or the war on this. It's all about power where they, they say, oh, there's something bad. And our solution is to control you more. Um, so that's where these things just don't ring true. Neb 1207 says, Chris, I love the videos. My question is, if the USD was once again backed by gold, yeah. uh, what would the implications of that shift be? And then he has several follow-up questions. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, mean, I think in the earlier interview, I said I think one of the two false choices that we're going to be offered is uh, a return to the gold standard, which who owns all that gold? The central banks, the the very rich, the the people who are really fighting against. So yeah, I definitely think a gold standard will be back. Um, if that happens, I mean, how does that not revalue? Uh, they, I mean, they would have to revalue gold dramatically higher to expunge the dollar-based debt um, out of the system in order for this economy to refunction. Um, since gold and silver are at, at a what a one to fifty six ratio, uh, now all of a sudden the world's government and the sh you know all the people who would listen to them now all of a sudden say oh yeah gold is money uh, and it's not only money it's revalued uh, ten twenty thirty times more than what it was once before. How does the gold to silver ratio maintain a fifty six to one ratio? Um, I mean all you're doing is putting even more focus out. Well, gold is now worth ten twenty thirty times more. 
uh, relative to the amount of dollar debt out there. How is silver not worth 10 to 20, 30 times more? And oh, by the way, um, you know, it comes out of the ground at a 10 to 1 ratio. And oh, by the way, gold has been treasured throughout all of hi human history. And silver has been used up as an industrial metal so much so that we burn through most of the major stockpiles that humanity has developed. Uh, and there's a lot less than a 10 to 1 ratio. Um, I, I can't help but to think that would ultimately help propel silver further. But the answer isn't a gold standard. The answer is competition and currency, um, the end of the Federal Reserve. I mean, they, they have a monopoly on, on the value of money, and that enables them to control everything else. We need to have gold as money. We need to have silver as money, platinum, copper, um, debt-free treasury notes, community currencies, uh, energy-backed currencies. I mean, we should have that, and that would provide a, 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 a flourishing uh, economic system. I mean, you, you think about where life is most flourishing. It's in the jungle. Well, how many species are there? There's you know, tons. But it, where is it where there's only one thing? Well, it's the desert. You know, that there's only one ecosystem that it operates, and it's usually a desert, and there's not a lot of life there. So um, kind of a weird analogy, but... <laughs> Um, I think uh, I'll do one more if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, God, I love this stuff. <laughs> uh, X Silverbug. I'm not sure if I like this guy here. Uh, That's on, a, on this non-troll question, why are you so concerned about hyperinflation when the entire rest of the world is concer concerned about deflation right now? This seems to be the fundamental difference between metal bugs and everyone else. Yes. Uh, and I think I addressed this in one of my uh, hyperinflation videos. Um, first of all, I don't care if we have a, a deflation, hyperinflation, whatever. All I know is that this paradigm is coming to an end. All I know is that uh, fake tangible or fake uh, uh, you know, uh, wealth, the, the stocks, the bonds, the dollars, the currency, that all comes to an end. And that the reality, whether we go through a massive deflation, the, default, the, the, the debt will get wiped away through an outright default, or we default through a hyperinflation. Either way, the system ends. Either way, the debt ends. What is left standing at the end of the day? Silver. S silver. Food. Uh, you know, real Water. skills and talents. Farmers. Uh, uh, you know, all land. Um, so I, I don't care uh, whether we have a deflation or, or a hyperinflation. The, the end result is a, a cessation of this current paradigm. Um, and I can think of nothing that will, will uh, transfer your wealth from this paradigm to the next paradigm better than silver. 